I'm gonna do a full elite skills workout. So if you wanna be elite or more elite, then this is for you. I'm gonna be working on some shot fake hesitation moves, some scoring pull-up jumpers, and then I'll be doing some explosive training for jumping higher and being more explosive on the court. I'm starting with two basketballs and I'm gonna be dribbling one of them between the legs and hesitate, reset my feet, then drop and split my feet into another between the legs dribble and hesitate. So I'm working on hesitating as long as possible and pounding my dribble hard. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing, but with the V behind the back dribble. So I'm gonna drop my body, split my feet, and pound it behind my back. And I'm working on hesitating as long as possible in between V behind the backs. All right, now I'm gonna go to the free throw line and make five free throws in a row. You're watching episode two of Elite Game. All right, now I'm gonna do a couple more two ball drills here. I'm dribbling this ball low around one leg, then I'm windmilling the other one around the other leg. That's called a dead ball. Now the other way. Okay, now. The next one I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna hesitate with the dribble, do a two foot tap, look up at the hoop, and then push my main ball out as if I were exploding off the dribble, like that. So I'm working on selling the shot fake, two foot tapping, while I'm hesitating, and then following that, I drop and split my feet, then push out. So another thing I'm working on here is delaying the shot fake. So it's not instant as the dribble comes up. It's delayed, so the hezzy is started, then there's the shot fake, and then the push out. All right, I'm gonna hold up a second. <laughs> now I'm gonna do the same drill again, but this time I'm gonna do it to the right. All right, now I'm gonna go to the free throw line and make five free throws in a row. Now I'm going to be shooting swoop shots now. A swoop shot is a type of hook shot where the release point is in front. So that's the swoop shot. It is a type of hook shot. I'm gonna be shooting these off the backboard as I go up the side of the lane with the dribble. So I'm gonna take one dribble, swoop shot. I need to make 10 going to the right and then 10 
going to the left. Now I need to make five in a row from the foul line. Now I'm going to be working on a mirror hezzy, which is a shot fake hezzy, to a between the legs dribble, pin my shoe to the floor, and shoot the jumper. So there's a mirror hezzy between jumper. Now, the type of mirror hezzy I'm going to do is a delayed mirror hezzy. So I'm going to start the hezzy, then perform the mirror, the shot fake, and then go to the between the legs dribble. Now, I need to focus on abruptly transitioning from my mirror hezzy to my between the legs dribble and try to transition to my shot as quickly as possible. So I want this between the legs dribble to be pounded hard and I want to sell the drive to my defender. So this has to be violent. This shoe is pinned to the floor, then I go up into the shot. So I'm going to make 10 in each direction. I'm working on hesitating long, abruptly getting into the mirror, and a violent between jumper. In addition to the quick transitions, I'm working on exploding high into my jumper. So I'm jumping as high as I can, also transitioning as quickly as possible, because if I have an advantage, I need to be able to capitalize as quickly as possible. So I need to make sure that I'm practicing this way, in a way that will prepare me for the best of defenders. So hard move through the legs, quick transition to the jumper. pushing it. Now I'm going to the free throw line and I need to make five free throws in a row. going to work on a mirror hezzy while two foot tapping. I'm going to delay the mirror hezzy and then I'm going to explode out of this move for one dribble here. But as I receive the ball with my inside hand, the other ball, I'm going to push it away and then pick up the main ball 
and rise up for the jumper while stopping with a one, two step. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm working on being abrupt. So I'm delaying the mirror, my footwork, I'm two foot tapping, and I'm working on an abrupt push off and transition from the stop to the jumper. So I need to stop quick and I need to elevate on my jumper. And I need to push this ball away. I'm gonna make 10 in each direction here. Need to focus. Goodness, okay. this I'm working on a big crossover step so as I push off I want that to be long and I want at least one of my feet outside the side of the lane All right, now I need to make two free throws in a row here. All right, I'm gonna write that down and get ready for the next set. Now I'm doing the same drill in the other direction, so I'm gonna delay my mirror hezzy and then abruptly push off. It's very common to see movement being not abrupt. And this is the key to being shifty, being able to transition rapidly to a top speed. So in this situation, I'm trying to explode as quickly as possible, but I want that transition to the explosion to be as quick as possible. So not a gradual push off, but a very abrupt push off. And that's key. So I have the two foot tap and I'm dribbling both balls one time in this direction, but then I'm pushing this ball away and starting to pick up with this outside hand and then putting my other hand on the ball. I'm working on protecting the ball as I pick it up because I'm starting to pick up with this hand, pushing this ball away, and then bringing the other hand in for the shot. So here it is, I need to make 10 going left here. Goodness. nine need to make one more so for this one my focus is to make it as quick as possible as abrupt as I can make it now I need to make five free throws in a row okay now I'm gonna write that down and then we'll go on to the next drill my man John right here. Best ball handler in the country, hands down. Super handles is tough, man. Definitely the hardest player I've ever had to guard. You're very serious, very serious. I want to make it as challenging as possible for the defender to guard me, and I want to be unpredictable. So that is key. Now I'm going to work on another mirror hesitation here, but with one basketball, and I'm going to start with the pounded between the legs dribble, and then I'm gonna begin my hezzy. So I'm gonna hesitate with my hand in a legal position on the ball, so no lower than the side of the ball. And then I'm gonna perform a mirror hezzy. So I'll transition to the shot fake. And then immediately following the shot fake, 
I'm going to drop into a between the legs dribble and I'm gonna pound the dribble hard because I'm gonna take a big crossover step and I want to keep my dribble alive during this crossover step over here. So the ball will be out to the side and I'm gonna work on pulling up abruptly and I'm not taking an additional dribble, just between the legs, keep the dribble alive and I want it hard. So let's just say I don't have the shot, I'll still have the dribble and I could go again or I could step back or do something else. I wanna make it as challenging as possible for the defender to guard me and I want to be unpredictable. So that is key. If the defender is predicting my timing regularly, then that's not good. I wanna be unpredictable and vary it so that the defender doesn't have a grasp on what I'm doing. I wanna be slippery to the defender. So I need to be able to change my timing and also change my footwork. I may be hesitating with the dribble, but my feet are still moving. And then I go into a mere hezzy and then explode out of the move in the other direction. I need to make 10 in each direction here. I need to be abrupt with these. So I need to push off quickly and take a big step like Ivers. Eight. I'm taking my time in between these because I want each one to be as explosive as possible. All right, now I need to make two free throws in a row. There's two, I'm gonna write that down and then do the drill in the other direction. I'm working on abrupt movements. I'm gonna begin my hezzy and then abruptly get into the mirror hezzy, abruptly push off, then abruptly stop and elevate. In addition, I, I wanna make sure that at least one of my feet is making it outside the side of the lane. Here it is, I need to make 10. Six. These jump shots are not easy, but that's by design. I wanna make sure that I'm continually challenging myself and get used to taking these type of jumpers. Now I've done it so much that, yeah, I've gotten used to shooting these type of jumpers, but I'm still pushing it. I wanna to continue to try to perform at a higher level. So I'm working on getting into them faster, trying to stop quicker, trying to elevate higher. And I'm turning and leaning back on these jumpers. So, all right, I have a few more here. Okay, one more. Now I need to make five in a row from the foul line. All right, now I'm gonna write that down. Now I'm going to be doing super shake, side step. So, I'm doing the super shake, hesitating, and there's a little bit of a hop and a push off. The ball position is wide, and then I pick it up 
as I'm completing my one, two step here. So if I can put my defender in reaction mode, then I have an advantage. The ball is over to the side, but I haven't pushed off yet. So there is a delay of push off. At this point, the defender may think that he has withstood my attack. He may be close enough to think that he has me covered, but he doesn't know what's coming next. So I execute a violent maneuver and then slow down. So we're going from slow to violent. And then the next strategy is slow to abrupt. So I'm able to maintain my dribble. If I don't have the shot, I can keep my dribble there. I'm working on being abrupt here, and I'm gonna work on elevating into my three-point shot. I need to make at least five in each direction. I need to make sure that the move is violent, then slow, then abrupt. Here it is. other direction. free throws in a row. Nine. Tie game. No time left. Ten. While I've just been practicing explosive movements on the court, now I'm gonna do my super explosive training with weights and other special exercises. This can vary from training session to training session, but this is what I'm doing right now. I'm coming back from an injured ankle, my left ankle, so box squats, the, the stretch is a little bit much at the moment, but I can do these. But this is something I do anyway. These are single leg pad squats, and I have specific ratios that correlate to standing vertical jump. And so when a player comes in and they wanna jump a specific height, well, I know what ratio would be needed to jump that high. And the ratio is calculated by the weight lifted at 0.6 meters per second divided by body weight. And that corresponds very closely to a specific range in vertical jump. Now this should be done in conjunction with my other explosive strength exercises, practicing jumping, the shock method, weighted jumps, and other exercises. And these methods work together to maximize explosive ability. And it's a lot of fun. And if a player has a much lower vertical jump, well, then that shows an explosive strength deficit and then the training can be adjusted accordingly. I have specific records that I'm trying to beat for each leg at a specific weight. Now this weight is a warm up weight, but I'm going to be resting on the pad with my opposite knee and then exploding up. I'm on the ball of my front foot with the heel slightly off the ground. And I'm trying to explode as quickly as possible and I'm measuring the speed with the Tindo unit. Two hundred and five pounds. Now I'm going to be doing depth jump 
jumps with my right leg and since my ankle is not ready for it yet, my left ankle, uh, I'm going to be doing some multi-directional hops with my left foot. I'm going to be dropping from 24 inches and I'm going to try to break a record. Twenty-two four. So now I'm going to do some hops on my left leg. All right. So now I'm going to get a drink and get ready for my next set. Adam Jeff jumps. Now for my left leg, I'm going to jump and tuck. Now the next set of single leg pad squats. for my last set of single leg depth jumps. Land soft and explode. Okay, for this first set, I'm gonna be doing stop short Nordics. I'm going to stop short explode back. I'm just doing five. Now I'm going to be doing some seated calf raises. This is a really good stretch. Explode up. Pause. This is a really good stretch on my ankle that is injured, but it's been slowly making progress. Elite Game is the name of this series, and I'm documenting my workouts and what I'm doing to add more to my game, be harder to guard, and gain a greater advantage over my competition. When these ankle circles, cars. Now I have weighted stop short Nordics. Now I have another set of seated calves. Now I'm going to be doing a set of fibialis raises. If you're wondering what my aim is when I'm doing my training sessions, it's to be harder to guard. It's to add more to my game. It's to 
soup up my game to a higher level. That's my focus. And so when it comes to my footwork, my skill, I'm trying to add more to my bag. I'm looking to get to higher levels strategically, tactically, physically. That's my aim. So when you see me on the court doing various moves and whatnot, you'll notice that I'm going as hard as I can go. There was a, a player I was working with recently and she told me how tired she was. And the thing is, we were taking time in between the reps, but each rep is explosive. If you want your game different, the way you train, the way you play, it needs to be different than your competition. It's interesting or amusing to see players who work on their game and are committed, and you see what they're working on. They're shooting these standstill jumpers. They're moving at half speed. They're barely getting off the ground. They're gonna have to be wide open to get those types of shots. That stuff is not going to help when it comes to scoring against the best of defenders. And if you see your competition doing that, then you know, hey, you can gain the advantage. If you were training the super handles way, what I'm talking about, what I'm gonna do here is a stop short version again, but with fast eccentric. So I'm gonna go down fast and then try to change direction quickly. To maximize your progress, you need to think long-term. That's how I look at it. If I can make little small bits of progress one day at a time, if I continue it long-term, then that can amount to big progress. Now I have a set of hanging knee tucks with a 40 pound dumbbell. Now I have another set of hanging knee tucks with a 40 pound dumbbell. I'm working on moving the weight up quickly, working the hip flexors and the lower abs. Now I'm going to be performing two ball imagination while keeping the third ball alive. So I need to be able to react to the location of the third ball while still dribbling the other two basketballs with imagination between the legs, behind the back whatever it may be. There it is. Now I'm gonna finish this workout by making 20 free throws in a row. This is to win the game. No time left. I hope you found inspiration in what you saw in this workout. I know at times it may be discouraging, but don't give up. Keep pushing, think long term, and you can gain the advantage over your competition. You can become harder to guard. You can be different than your competition. So this is the second episode of Elite Game. The next episode is coming soon. So keep tuning in, and if you have any questions, let me know. Much love to you, and I hope to see you soon.